Welcome to a noob's guide to Colic Sun Eater. This is Colic Sun Eater, herald of the tempest and bringer of darkness. He comes from the land of the ice and snow, where there is midnight sun and the hearth lights glow, wielding the hammer of the gods. He's a dragon ogre shagoth, which means he's half centaur, half dragon, half ogre, and all furry clickbait. Dragon ogres combine all the unkillability and magic of dragons with the chaotic bloodlust and sexual appetite of centaurs, and then they mixed in ogres, because group projects are the worst. You may remember that Colic Sun Eater was released for Total War Warhammer as part of the Warriors of Chaos DLC, a semi-broken pre-order bonus on release that many still find about as fun as your annual prostate exam, which if you're over 35, friendly reminder to check in with your favorite rectal spelunker. Colec himself is clearly a supporter of No Shave November, as he doesn't want any extra competition in becoming the leading killer of adult men. And unlike everyone's least favorite form of butt play, Colec brings his own mood lighting and an industrial grade astroglide to better prepare the rectums of men for the coming of chaos. But as Kolek begins his campaign in the far northern chaos waste, it's unlikely he'll have warm hands. Or paws, or talons? Maybe feet? I mean, what do you call dragon hands? Stuck in the far north, Kolek unfortunately has the same starting position as all the other Warriors of Chaos, something CA has started to change with future DLCs and patches, and you can safely assume that this too will change when the Chaos Wastes get expanded in Warhammer 3, because I can't imagine Kolek wanting to spend a second longer than he has to with Mr. Chaos Class President Suckup Archeon, and there's only so many used condoms you can find before living with Sigvald becomes less than magnificent. But for now, Kolek remains poised to sweep down from the Chaos Waste with his marauding horde, and his Chaos Horde is uniquely dragon ogre flavored, which I imagine tastes something like a cross between allspice and sweaty balls. Dragon ogres are an ancient race, fueled by pure spite, whose only goal is to destroy the world. These creatures allied with the Dark Gods and pledge themselves to eternal servitude in exchange for immortality. Now they grow ever larger, stronger, and more powerful with each passing day, and live only to ruin the world. In our reality, we call them baby boomers. And since there's no limit to the size dragon ogres can reach, we're talking about bigger than mountains, men, trolls, and, you know, less impressively, dwarves. The oldest and most primal of the dragon ogres are called Shagoths, and the biggest among them are Kolek and his daddy dearest, Krakenrock the Black, who is so large his sleeping body was once mistaken for a mountain. Kolek isn't quite that large, but giant mutant genetics clearly run strong in his family and he's still big enough to peek over a town's ramparts. Or not. Okay, hold on. There's an easy lore-friendly fix for this. I mean, sure, he'll clip through the gates, but now you can punch mammoths in the face, so wins all around. The only downside of playing a big and this big is that you can't exactly hide in a crowd, so know that if you play as Kolak, CA made it 20% easier to ambush him, because somehow it's still okay to discriminate against tall people. I mean, you don't see stunty dwarves getting a 20% movement penalty because they have short legs, but thankfully none of that matters to Kolak. You see, he's as old as dirt and as tough as rocks, and you play him as a walking mountain. Need something smashed? Send Kolek. And since he already has some passive ward save, if you focus on that, he'll become an unkillable one-man army. But you don't earn an epitaph like Sun Eater just by outlasting your expiration date. Kolek was actually there when the Dragon Ogres pledged themselves to serve the Dark Gods, and personally made a bargain with them so disgusting, so vile, that it made 4chan look family friendly and the Brexit agreement look good in comparison. And now his mere presence spreads chaos corruption. Corruption. And even the sun refuses to shine on Kolek and hides itself behind storm clouds whenever he appears. So wherever Kolek walks, darkness precedes him, with a raging storm overhead and Kolek as its creamy nougat center. But fortunately for the buttholes of men, the Herald of the Tempest spends most of his time asleep in a deep gorge up north, and only awakens every eight generations, when the green moon Morschlieb rises in front of the second moon Manschlieb and summons a storm so terrible that hundreds of Northmen drag captives to the World's Edge Mountains, slit their throats, and throw them into a deep chasm all to awaken Kolek the Sun Eater. 
That last part with all the blood sacrifice isn't actually strictly necessary, but the Northmen pride themselves on tradition and invest so much time in their summoning rituals that Kolek feels just really awkward stopping it now, so he kind of just plays along. I mean, really, like all dragon ogres, Kolek is energized by the power of lightning. I mean, it's part of being a primal being. This little Achilles heel is actually what keeps them from doing a global goose step and leaves them with a propensity to rip Van Winkle for eons at a time. So being a giant monster powered by the raw elements of nature does have a few drawbacks, and unlike the Energizer Bunny, they need frequent electrical top-ups just to keep going and going, slumbering away until huge thunderstorms rage overhead that zap them with 1.21 gigawatts of power, which wakes them up ready to eat lightning and crap thunder, then travel back to the 1950s to get to first base with their own mothers. When Kolek does spring to life, he roars with ecstatic triumph as crackling bolts of pure power caress his ancient scales, working their electric fingers into the crevices of his custom-made form-fitted brass armor, which he wears to better attract nature's sweet electrical kisses, now covered in soot from countless late-night static love sessions, which has left Kolek electrically supercharged so that he gains the unique ability Lord of the Storm, which allows him to summon lightning and zap everyone around him. And that's, like, pretty sweet, man. Those that aren't killed by his wayward sparking are struck by both fear and terror, and those still standing are struck again by a giant hammer, Kolek's unique quest weapon, the Star Crusher. Forged in the heart of a volcano and served piping hot from the nearest Dragon Ogre horde, the world of man is going to give it up to Kolek, and they're going to give it up hard, because they're taking Kolek's hammer, and that is not his hammer. The hammer is his penis. Kolek leads his band of dragon centaurs on a raucous ride of excess, gorging themselves on blood, misery, and liquid lightning energy drinks. So that dragon ogres and shagoths both get 10 extra melee attack skill in Kolek's army, and you'll also recruit all dragon ogres for 60% less and pay 30% less to upkeep them, so there's no need to start selling kidneys to pay for all this. Combined with the recruitment discounts all Chaos armies have, the Empires of Man are set to be dominated in the end times by an army bought from the last chance sales rack. And while it's clear the game wants you to recruit Dragon Ogres for Kolek, they're not actually available until mid-game and late-game for him, so it's up for debate if you should actually rush them or not to create this fun thematic army. And though he leads a horde of scaly quadrupeds, the Norskin tribes of men do actually follow him and can be awakened to worship him as a god of primal lightning. So once you burninate their villages and burninate the countryside, they thank you by getting woke and joining your multicultural expedition. They'll provide you a nice base income and follow you around like crazy sycophants chanting your name and screaming for more blood for the blood god. You know, typical chaos stuff. But if you invest in these guys in buff chaos warriors and marauder horsemen, it ignores what makes dragon centaur Thor so much fun. So raise all their villages and use their lifeless bodies to feed your army and go for growth points to unlock your dragon ogre brethren. You can just use Kolek to face tank everything in the early game, and if you focus on collecting armor and artifacts with ward save, you'll find yourself with a monster rocking 90% reduction to all damage. So just Leroy Jenkins him into whatever you fight to soak up arrows and artillery fire, and you can do the same with Shagoths. Just let the enemies swarm up around them, and then you charge in your monster cavalry dragon ogres to finish it all up. Then it's just a matter of turning south and sweeping life from existence, playing whack-a-mole and chasing down any army not flying a freak flag. I mean, as far as campaigns go, it's not exactly the most exciting in the game, but I mean, I would still take it over a long weekend with my in-laws, and it goes to show just how far CA has come and their design for the game. I mean, if you want to spice things up, you can always buy furry handcuffs and a nurse's outfit, or you can just grab the Sword of Cain and give it to Kolek for unmatched raw melee power. And at that point, the only way to beat him is to assess assassinate him before the fight begins. But that sort of lameness and forward thinking only exist in countries with socialized medicine. Kolek the Sun Eater serves four dark masters who don't offer retirement plans. So throw Osha out the window and become another herald of chaos and help Kolek fulfill his millennia-old vow to the chaos gods and wipe out existence and bring about a permanent black light rave party. Then, after the party to end all parties, Kolek and his dragon ogre brethren can finally lay down for a permanent rest. Awesomeness accomplished. Or maybe not, and maybe he'll just get his head chopped off in the end times by Cetra. But at least in your version, the Sun Eater won't go out like a bitch. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this noob's guide, consider ignoring your job and responsibilities to watch another. Remember, they only pay you just enough so you won't quit. So only work hard enough to not get fired. 
have a nice day out there.